flowers have been making the world a beautiful place to live in. One generation of flowering plants reproduces to form the next generation of flowering plants and these flowering plants beautify the earth. Now who helps in the reproduction of plants? Well, there are many birds and insects like butterflies and bees which feed on the nectar produced in the flowers and in turn helps in pollination. Now what is pollination? Well, pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one plant to the stigma of another plant, thus propagating the species. Now these organisms which help in pollination are known as the pollinators. Bees not only help in pollination, but they are a major source of two commercially important products, honey and bee wax. Honey helps in digestion and has a medicinal value, whereas bee wax helps in the manufacture of cosmetics and candles. Now to keep the world clean and tidy, there are many birds like eagles and vultures, insects like ants and beetles that feed on dead and decaying animals and plants. These organisms convert the dead organisms into simpler compounds so that microorganisms present in the soil can easily act upon them and break them into the nutrients. These birds and insects that help uh, creating a clean and a tidy world are known as scavengers. Now the lush green crop fields on which the entire world depends on also depends on other environmental factors, the most important of which is oxygen. And this oxygen is provided to plants by burrowing animals. Burrowing animals such as ants and earthworms stay in the soil and make holes or burrows for themselves. Now while doing this, what they do is they loosen the soil so that air can circulate within the soil and roots that are deeply embedded in the soil can easily get oxygen for respiration. Now birds and insects not only help in agriculture but they also are major sources for economically important materials such as silk. The silk moth is red for manufacture or for production of silk. Now, this is the life cycle of a silk moth. See, eggs first hatch to form the young stage of a silk moth known as the larva. The larva on undergoes a change and forms a pupa when it surrounds itself with a hairy casing known as the cocoon. Cocoon is a resting phase of the larva. In this phase, reintegration of tissues and organs take place and finally an adult silk moth comes out of the cocoon. This process is known as metamorphosis. This transformation from the larva stage to an adult stage after reintegration of tissues and organs is known as metamorphosis. Now, for rearing of silk, what we do is we collect these cocoons, place them in boiling water so that the pupa inside dies, after that, the silk from the cocoon is unwound and then twisted into a yarn. You would be surprised to know that a single pupa 
can produce nearly 300 meters of silk thread. Now, not only rearing of silk worms are important commercially, but rearing of fishes are also very commercially important. Now, rearing and breeding of fishes on a large scale and under controlled condition is known as pisciculture, where pisci means a fish. Now, fish forms a rich source of food in countries where agriculture is not properly developed. This is because fish provides easily digestible proteins. They provide essential minerals such as iron, calcium, iodine, copper, magnesium, and phosphorus. Fish liver oil is an important source of vitamin A and vitamin D, which are fat-soluble vitamins. Their fat provides energy and forms a valuable source of reserve food in our bodies. Fishes provide industrial products such as lubricants, fertilizers, paints, glues, etc. Fishes like mackerels and salmons have been successfully reared through pisciculture. Now, all these organisms, all these insects, birds, or fishes have a high economic value. These not only help uh, making the lives of mankind easier, but they also make the world a better place to live in. 